Radio astronomers Robert Wilson and Arno Penzias were conducting observations of the Milky Way in 1965 using the Bell Lab's Holmdel Horn antenna, originally intended for radio signal amplification, when they encountered signals that they could not explain. They attributed this noise to possible terrestrial sources. Could it have been the hubbub of New York City just north of their lab? Or could it maybe have been bird poop? The story goes that Penzias and Wilson thought perhaps the pigeons that were roosting inside and around the horn may have been obscuring its data collecting capabilities, so they got to work clearing out the pigeons and cleaning up after them. But still, the incessant noise remained. And as it turns out, they had been detecting the cosmic microwave background all along, evidence of the Big Bang. In fact, 13 years after their discovery, Penzias and Wilson won the Nobel Prize in Physics for their discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation, and they shared the prize with Piotr Leonidovich Kapitsa for his basic inventions and discoveries in the area of low temperature physics. Now, this idea of low temperatures is actually relevant here, as we'll see in our discussion about the cosmic microwave background itself. So what exactly is the cosmic microwave background, or abbreviated, we call it also the CMB? To understand it, we must go back and review some concepts that we've covered before. First and foremost, as we've been saying quite a few times in this unit already, the universe expanded after the Big Bang. This is fact. Next, the wavelengths of these initial high-energy short-wavelength gamma photons became so cosmologically redshifted that they are now observed as low-energy, long-wavelength radio waves, which explains why radio astronomers Wilson and Penzias could detect them with their Holmdel Horn radio antenna. These near-radio waves can be detected at a wavelength of about one millimeter, making them technically microwaves. And using Wien's law, which relates wavelengths of EM radiation to their associated temperatures, we can determine the temperature that corresponds to these waves as being about 3 Kelvin, or more specifically, 2.72548 Kelvin, with a very small margin of error. Now, the average temperature of the CMB is 2.72548 Kelvin, but this given margin of error indicates that the cosmic microwave background has tiny temperature variations. This lack of uniformity, or anisotropy, the irregularity in the fact that the early universe was observed not to have had the same characteristics all throughout itself, may have given rise to the clumping of the material that resulted in the formation of the galaxies and eventually the stars within them. Over the years since its discovery, the CMB has been observed and detected by several space probes and telescopes with the intent of understanding it better. The first observation was done by none other than Penzias and Wilson themselves in 1965 using the Holmdel Horn radio antenna. Here we can see a thin band of signals in the center of an otherwise homogeneous background. This thin band alone demonstrated that the cosmic microwave background was not uniform. And as our technology improved, so did the quality of our observations, and more and more of that anisotropy could be seen. Here we see the CMB based on data collected by observations done by the Cosmic Background Explorer or COBE spacecraft, which operated from 1988 to 1993. This new and improved view of the CMB continued to fuel the scientific exploration of it, leading to the WMAP image of the CMB coming up next. Before we see this image, notice now that the irregularities in the CMB here are more prominent than before, and patches of slightly warmer temperatures can be easily separated from regions that are slightly cooler than the average temperature, which is shown here in green. Now this anisotropy can be seen in even more detail in this image from 2003, specifically produced by the observational data from the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or the WMAP mission, which was launched in 2001 and continued operating and observing the afterglow of the Big Bang until 2010, when it was replaced by a newer and more sensitive spacecraft, Planck. Now we can see an even more impressive CMB, with fluctuations even smaller than ever anticipated before. This image, 
produced by using the data from the Planck mission, is the most highly resolved image of the CMB that has been produced yet. One interesting feature of the CMB that remained apparent with each new mission throughout the years of observation was the CMB cold spot, which is a region where the fluctuation from the average temperature is more significant than anywhere else, reaching about 70 microkelvin lower than the average temperature. Now, this may seem like an irrelevant amount, but for cosmologists studying the CMB, even the slightest change in temperature is very significant. There are some interesting explanations for the existence of this cold spot, including the correlation of its position in the night sky with what's called the Eridanus supervoid, but we won't be going into detail about this just yet. A link to the image shown here is provided in the description to the video if you're interested in reading and examining it in more detail. Now, looking again at the CMB in this high-resolution image from 2013 and comparing it to the earlier images shows that better telescopes have higher resolution for what they can detect. Now, the CMB itself is a peek into the past. So as we switch gears going into the second half of this unit, we'll focus our attention on what's in store for the future of the universe, specifically regarding the relationship between dark energy and the accelerated expansion of the universe. Stay tuned to find out more.